I'm Scott Allen Miller. If you come to Nicaragua, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of water towers dotting the countryside in the cities, really just about everywhere. And this is, it doesn't take too long to figure out a Nicaragua thing. Is there a history behind this? Is there a reason why there's so many of these water towers? Of course there is. And we're gonna get to that on today's show. Water towers have become a staple of Nicaragua culture. They're everywhere in the country. And as you uh, explore the country, whether driving around or just staying in a city, you're probably gonna notice them. And most people who are here for any length of time mention it. They wanna know why are there so many water towers? It's really odd. Well, there's some good reasons for it. And let's start with, remember, a couple of the cities here in Nicaragua, such as this one of Leon and Granada, the big tourist center, these are old colonial cities. These are cities who were laying out their streets and starting to talk about where they're going to put their cathedrals when the great grandparents of the pilgrims were still running around in nappies and playing with hoops in the streets, right? These are really, really old cities. And because of that, there's a lot of infrastructure that is extremely old. Now, of course, the plumbing in the ground is not as old as all that, but it is still extremely old. And in many cases, structures, roads, and even plumbing and sewers and storm drains and such may predate even colonial America in the most extreme circumstances. So we're talking about some really old locations, and this adds a lot of challenge to anyone who's trying to provide, for example, a water infrastructure for the city. Now we also have just generally, you know, a lot of farmhouses or rural areas where people have water. They're gonna be drawing from a well, and even now there's very limited. You have to really work hard to find this, but you will find communities where people are still manually pumping water. Or there is a community not that far from here, maybe five miles away, where they have a solar plant that pumps the water for them, but it is still a local community well and just run by solar. Now, in the case of the solar, it's really reliable and there aren't very many times where you would not have power because there's sun pretty much all the time here. Even during the rainy season, you're pretty hard pressed to have more than 72 hours without quite a bit of sun. So generally, that's not a problem. But traditionally, there were a couple of challenges. And even still today, some of these challenges exist. One of those is consistent water pressure. Now, if you're in some place like Managua, you expect that water pressure is going to be pretty consistent. They have a very large scale uh, water plant that runs throughout the city, and they're able to keep that pretty well maintained. Managua is also a relatively recent city. Now, the city itself is not super current. It's about 200 years old. But after 1972, when the city was liquefied during the earthquake, almost everything was rebuilt. So while the city is technically older, most of the infrastructure of the city is newer. So its water works pretty well and we don't have those problems. If you're out here in Leon or in Granada or in Acatal in the north, I assume because they're colonial cities, you're gonna have old plumbing mechanisms in the city that often can't provide enough water pressure for what people would like today or ever, right? You just, you have a lot more limited water capacity and just how the system works in general. So back in the day in these areas, these water towers were used to simply energize your house compared to the city system to give yourself some more pressure, which is a nice bonus. It's not the only way to do that though. The the blue unit right over here behind me is a pressure tank. And with this, you can use a pump to actually pressurize the tank, get a lot of pressure in there, and you don't have to worry about go putting water high up into a tower in order to get uh, some amount of pressure uh, that you can't get from the city system or that you would get more consistent pressure than you would get from a pump pulling directly from a well, for example. So in this particular instance, there's a well right there at the base of the tank. There's a very strong pump. That pump pressurizes that tank. It becomes absolutely rock hard. It swells up. And then when you use water in the house, the tank actually pushes it in from the pressure and, and you, you get a lot of pressure in the house. That works really well, but it doesn't have a lot of capacity. So it's really good for providing extreme pressure and evening out the pressure and it gives you a little bit should you lose power for a few minutes that you don't have to worry about not using water if you're in the shower you can keep showering you can do things like that and since most of our power outages here in Nicaragua especially in Leon last only seconds or minutes this acts a lot like a battery and we could actually consider it a water pressure battery where it's able to keep pushing a little bit of pressure well, it's actually quite a bit but for a little bit of time to ride out little blips in the power infrastructure so it works really well and this is what's popular with more current installs today. 
The water tank that we showed, that is an old one. We don't use the one that's here that I'm showing, but it does still work. You can push water up there. And some of you saw recently, we had an episode where water was going to it accidentally and it was overflowing all over the place because it's not meant to be used anymore. So it's not hooked up correctly. The water tanks can hold a lot more water than one of these pressure tanks. I'm sorry, the, the towers can hold a lot more than the tanks, but they generally provide less pressure and they take more work to fill. You're moving water way up there and letting it come all the way back down again. And there's a lot more piping and you got to, you know, the whole structure is a lot harder to deal with, uh, but they can provide uh, water at a lower pressure for a long period of time. You fill that, to that tower all the way up and a normal house could run for a day or maybe more, maybe a few days, especially if you're being very judicious with your water usage, you could get a lot out of that. Uh, so that was back from an era when you were really designing things to ride out a day without power rather than just a few minutes. Traditionally, power was a lot more of a problem in Nicaragua than it is today. In the last couple of years, the power infrastructure has improved greatly. And now long outages are relatively rare. Of course, they still happen, but they're not nearly as dramatic as you get in the United States. However, when there's an outage in the United States, typically your uh, water plants are able to keep pushing water because they have their own power supply separate from the main grid or a backup to the grid more likely. Here, typically the main grid powers the water plants. And so if the city loses power, so does the water plant and the water pressure drops or disappears completely. It depends where you are, it depends on the situation, but you need to be prepared for these things. Traditionally, there were a lot of power problems in Nicaragua. Going back nine to 12 years and further, you had outages that were quite dramatic and very regular. So having a tower could be a big deal because you might lose electricity for a day at a time, not super likely to be a day, but 12 hours or more was not uncommon. So a tower did a lot to be able to make it that you're able to just keep using water all throughout the day and didn't have to worry about those types of outages. Also, and this still happens, like I said, with Granada and Leon, there's this old water infrastructure. There's still problems pushing water to all of the city. So depending on where you live here in the barrio, far out in the barrio, we're on a well. So we don't have to worry about this. But if you're on city water, even just a little ways from here, you have situations where you may run into parts of the day where the water gets turned off, either on a regular basis or just uh, from time to time that it's something that could happen, but you may go two to six hours without water. You never really go a day without water. They're very conscious of that. But if you're gonna have little breaks because they need to pressurize other systems, they need to push water out into a farming area or whatever, they may shut off parts of the city so that they're able to do that. Or they may do it because they're gonna fix leaks and try to maintain the infrastructure because remember, everything is quite old so the amount of maintenance that they need is very high so water towers are also really important for that in that case it's not about pressure although that helps it's really about water storage and that's why from time to time you will find places like we had back when we lived in labo rio you can probably find some of my old episodes where i show it we had a very large water tank even larger than this in our atrium but it wasn't elevated so if we were to run out of power we would not be able to pump the water out of it. We could use it for drinking water if we needed to. You could scoop things out of it, but it would be very limited. We'd, ha we'd have no pressure. So that was designed for situations where the city lost water, but the city did not lose power. And because the power infrastructure has improved so much, that essentially solved all of our major problems when we lived in Labo Rio by having a water storage tank in the house. We didn't have to have the complication and cost of a tower, but we were still able to get water supply almost all the time. It solved essentially all the problems that we had. So that's becoming a lot more popular today that people are moving to the tanks, like I just showed the pressure tank, or moving to just tanks on the ground and being able to keep supplying a pump to that. And of course you have the option of having a generator that runs your pump. So in some cases you may not even care if you lose power because you're gonna deal with it that way. So towers are, are much less popular than they were before. Uh, the key reasons, really it was, it was a, an accumulation of reasons that came together that made the towers make sense. And now because electricity is so much more reliable and there's other options and we just have ways to work around things. And most places don't have the water distribution problems of these old colonial cities. So the towers are widely just becoming uh, vestiges of another age. It's also worth noting that while we are here on a well, and so we keep the pressurized pump in the in the house, the pressurized tank with a pump uh, for the house, um, a lot of people would simply do without that. It is uncommon enough to have problems that uh, for the most part, people are just going to 
from time to time, risk not having the water. Uh, it depends where you are, it depends on your scenario, and it depends how much you care about it uh, as to whether or not this is something that you really want to do. Also, it's worth noting, if you're in an area with really cold water, a tower like this can do quite a bit to warm it up. Uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, you don't really need hot water for taking showers. And no, you don't need hot water. But in American parlance, we use hot water to mean anything that's warmer than the straight out of the faucet ground water, right? And so when we say hot water, we're not talking about things that are scalding. We're not talking about 100 degrees. We're not even talking about 90 degrees. We're talking about 75 to 80 degrees. We're talking about taking the edge off. We're talking about making soap dissolve a little bit more easily. So we're, we're not worried about making it hot because the air is warm. And that's the argument that people make. The air is so warm, you don't need the water to be warm. Well, that's still not true. You still want the heat to fight bacteria when you're washing dishes. You still want to get soap off of your hands. You still want to get grease off of plates. You have all these things that really work better with hot water. And getting soap and shampoo out of your hair is a really big one. Not for me, but for normal people who have hair. Uh, my daughters, for example, they really like being able to get soap out of their hair. Me, I, it's one of the benefits of not having hair. I can just use a bar of soap and it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's in the cities. Now, if you go out into the country, you have basically the same thing, except for a lot of places in the country were building these towers when they didn't have electricity at all. Or maybe they're working on, elect on, on solar power, but they don't have batteries or on very simple systems, or they may be using a generator part-time. And what they do is either by using manual labor, using animal labor, using solar without batteries, whatever, they're pushing water up into the tower, storing their energy up there and using the gravity system to power their water system all the time. And this is a completely sensible thing when you're in a rural area. A lot of those areas, they don't have power. They're not on the power grid. Now they are, right? That's, but that's a recent thing. A lot of the things we talk about, how good the infrastructure is in Nicaragua, how advanced things are, how well everything is in comparison to first world countries, really, um, that stuff, while it's true and it's amazing that that stuff exists and we're really impressed with how the country's doing, Almost all of that is quite recent, and even 10 or 15 years ago, having a really good power plant delivering electricity out into rural farming areas was still a bit of a future dream. They knew it was coming, but it was a long way away. So having uh, towers like this for decades was a really important way of having pressurized water on the farm or in rural areas and just little houses or whatever. And you'll find this even out in places like uh, Castle Leon, which is a relatively recent development that is on city water that has small houses that you would never guess would have towers like this. It absolutely does. Partially because people build them out of tradition, but also partially because even now, with a little bit of electrical problems, with a little bit of water pressure problems, with a little bit of just this is how we do things, so it's, uh, it's part of the culture and it's cheap because everyone does it, they put in towers. And it is a level of comfort. It means you just don't have to worry about some things. And everyone's used to seeing it. You don't think anything about it. My own properties that I manage down at the at the beach, it is really common. We do that there. We have um, not towers like this, but we have them lodged in the roof. Again, it gives us a little bit warmer water uh, at times. A lot of times, if possible, we put black tanks up there so they gather a little bit more heat during the day. They give us that evening out of water pressure. And should there be a well that goes dry or any problem, we have that much more water to work with because you have to have water in a hotel and out on the beach there have been some water supply problems now some of that is political there was a private person who bought the rights to the water to the beach and then decided not to deliver it reliably and that caused a lot of problems but finally the government has agreed that the government's going to step in and bring in um, water from the municipality and uh, that's going to fix that we're sure but because of those things where there was you know people who were trying to provide private water and to offset the wells because everyone was on wells there Right, so it wasn't that there was no water, it's that the government expected people to be on wells and then a private person came in and offered a system and putting it together, well, the wells would go dry pretty quickly because it's on a beach. Like you can't have a deep well on a beach, you just can't. And the system that they were providing, well, it would only run sometimes when it was of convenience for the owner. So those things ended up being problems. So it was really important for hotels and private people in their houses to store water so that when they were in that mood or the wells were going dry, you had a long period of time without rain or a lot of people were coming out on the beach like happens on Samana Santa, 
you just have so much water usage all of a sudden that no one can keep up. So the extra storage is absolutely critical. So throughout the country, there's different reasons why it happens, but towers have been very consistently for a very long time, the standard solution to a wide range of water problems that we have here in Nicaragua. And so if you come out today, you will still see a lot of towers dotting the countryside, but be aware that the average one is probably not in use. In my own experience, I would say it is under 50% of ones you see are still actively used. They may be usable in a pinch, but they're not currently holding water and part of an active water system. But certainly a large number of them are and some new ones still go up and it is still a very sensible system. So if you come to Nicaragua and you're going to be doing more than just renting an apartment, although we did it when we were renting an apartment, you may very easily be in a position where you want to add a tank, a pump, a pressurized tank, or even a tower to your plans for where you're building or a house that you're buying and you'd like to upgrade because it just evens out the water supply and it acts to water the same way that putting in batteries or generators do to electrical. And again, while the electric supply is pretty good here, it does have these little blips. And so we all add batteries to our houses and that makes all the difference. I get to keep working nine out of 10 probably more. It could be 19 out of 20 of our power outages are so fast that I don't ever have a computer, a router, Wi-Fi, anything. Nothing stops. My phones don't stop charging. Everything keeps going. I hear the air conditioner turn off. The battery system beeps at me. I get a couple of beeps and everything's back on, but I never miss a beat. My, my desktop stays on, my screens stay on. I keep conversations going. I'm still on the phone. Nothing drops, not the network, not the computer, not the phone, nothing. And so that we do with electrical, that's all it takes. And little fixes like the water tanks uh, of all types may do exactly what you need to ride out blips with the water. Now you may not have an area that has water blips, so that may not be a big deal, but if you are or potentially are, this is how we often solve it. Simple solutions that are very cheap, no big deal at all. We even added that really large water tank to a house that we only rented for one year. It is now a Super Express that has a huge water tank for their for their offices. Uh, but that's <clears throat> we did that as a renter, worked it out with the landlords, and they took it off our rent over time. We paid for the tank and had that all put in, and they just lowered our rent. So we split the difference. We got a lot of use out of it. They got a tank at the end of the day. Everyone was super happy. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you would be so kind as to buy me a coffee, if you're interested in supporting the channel, that would go a really long way to helping make all this possible. I did just announce on the shorts that we are uh, already got a, th a 3D VR camera. It's a very entry-level one, but there's a new one that just came out, the Candau Ego. It just came out like like two years ago, um, and it's of a, a lot of interest to me. I want to learn how to do VR footage and see if that's something that's going to work, but that is an expense that we've had to take on. We're going to be putting those videos not on this channel because that would be super annoying to mix that in here. We're not sure. One of the questions we have is, should that be put on Nicaragua 360? Because VR footage is kind of like 360 footage, but they're definitely different or should it be a separate channel like Nicaragua VR that you can go to? I think it's probably gonna be VR Nicaragua, but I don't know. And and then it's pure 3D on one and pure 360 on the other because they, they really are different and you use them differently. But so cameras like that, uh, new equipment that we're getting all the time, that's buying me a coffee is how we make that possible. So if, that's, if you wanna help support the channel, that really makes a difference. And uh, of course, watch an extra episode, like and subscribe, tell your friends, post on social media, make sure you get those links out there. That's, I watched this video today and it, it spoke to me. This is cool information you should have. Uh, great views of water towers uh, in Nicaragua, whatever, that makes a huge difference as well. So thanks for all your support. Love my community. It's so great being able to make these videos and I will see all of you tomorrow. And now popping up on the screen, four videos that are somehow related to this. Normally it's one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and four years ago today, if we have those videos or something related. And if uh, you'd consider watching one of these videos, that'd be fantastic. That does a lot. That tells the algorithm you love the show. So think about that while, uh, or just watch something else.